My name is James Moore, and you're listening to KRUULP 100.1 FM, the voice of Fairfield, Iowa, listener-supported, open-source, grassroots community radio. And we have on the line with us Nina Hagen. Yes. Hi, everybody in Iowa. My name is Nina. Ich bin ein Berliner. <laughs> you know that little German? Jonas Kennedy said that in the 60s when he visited Berlin. I am a Berliner. And I love it. I love it to be on your radio station and talk about this very exciting situation here in the United States. Um, new elections, new hopes, and um, fantastic candidates, especially one of them, especially fantastic because he is a peacemaker. And um, I was born in East Berlin, the communist part. And um, my lab, I'm only talking to you guys in Iowa because of the courageous American and Russian veterans who saved us from this uh, perverted situation. And I, every war is a perverted situation in my universe. Where I come from, my father was a half Jew. His mother was a German woman, not a Jewish woman. And, and um, so therefore, I'm only quarter. I'm a quarterback. But uh, nonetheless, I'm a human being. But there are some very extreme and um, I call them perverted philosophers out there who, who believe so much in their um, dogmatic um, philosophy about how to achieve, to create a prophecy. It, it's, it's weird. I don't even know how to say this. I, it's all written in a book called First Manhattan, Then Berlin by a German political author called Wolfgang Eggert. And those are some of the reasons why I am supporting Dennis, Dennis Kucinich for president, because I have seen um, leaders come and go. I have seen leaders promise us heaven on earth. And what did they do? They created yet another war. And I am 52 years old now. I was born in 55 in East Berlin. And I'm urging everybody Please at least get to know Dennis Kucinich, and it's easy because I dedicated my home page for him, for example, and um, I created a, um, a television station here in California. We have these pioneers, and they created an internet TV broadcast, and so I'm broadcasting live as, as we speak on um, this internet address uh, free what am I, what's it called, videofreeearth.com, and I'm on channel 7, and I'm so happy, to, are you still with me, oh my God, I never stop. Oh yes, Nita, thank you so much, we're listening intently. Oh cool, Iowa, I want to come over, I was never in Iowa, can you imagine, it must be so amazing, and uh, because it's a part of the United States, and it's, it's just so beautiful every state so far I have seen and I can't wait to come and maybe do a concert one fine day when my new album is out I want to meet you people and look you in the eye so that you can see that what I'm saying is not pretentious or it's not because I want to uh, I have a hidden agenda oh no I'm in this uh, way much like Dennis um, the goddess of truth is also dancing on my tongue. <laughs> well, <laughs> Even though I don't have a tongue stud, but my son does. <laughs> well, that's beautiful. Nina, let's start for our listeners at the beginning with you. We're gonna, we, let, let us understand you a little bit. We'll move towards your support, both a, a longtime supporter of peace, uh, very much against the invasion in Iraq, and, and other things. But first of all, let us just do a, a brief bio with you. I know... Uh, it says uh, Wikipedia talks about you being raised by two atheists, yet you somehow found God, and also that you were raised, uh, your mother remarried a revolutionary anti-establishment singer-songwriter that certainly must have formed some of your your early uh, uh, formative years. You started with a band automobile uh, when you were, I believe, 16, and, and you went on to be an influence 
finally coming over to the West. Could you just briefly tell some of that story because it's really fascinating? Oh, thank you so much. Well, as I said, I was born in 1955 in the 50s in Berlin. At home, um, my mom was listening to rock and roll music and cha-cha-cha and all that weird music from the 50s. So I grew up with the sound of the typewriter. My father was a, a, a script writer, a film script writer. He wrote the very first East German after war comedy. And then they kicked him out of the party. Everybody had to be in this one party. Of course, there was two other parties, but uh, if somebody is not in the one party, at least he should be in another party, otherwise he's a suspect. Um, and my, later on, my uh, stepfather, when I was uh, nine years old, my stepfather came into our life, in, into my mother's and my life, and um, his name was Iswolf Biermann, and he was the number one public enemy in East Germany. He was forbidden to sing in public. Can you imagine a poor singer is not even allowed to sing in public? That's uh, the death sentence, sentence for any artist. And so he was only singing in his living room. But guess what? Fantastic American... Um, I call them my superheroes, like John Bayez, Bob Dylan, Hedy West, and, and others um, from all over the world came visit Wolf at home in East Berlin. And I was just a little uh, teenager, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old, learning to play the country-style picking guitar. I can country pick. I learned it from Hedy West when I was 11 years old. So I... Uh, Biermann also wrote songs about the uh, the civil rights movement, the American civil rights movement. He uh, he's a blues man. He sings the blues. He's like a singer songwriter, the uh, the old school, with, you know, with the guitar, and that's Wolf Biermann. And he wrote very critical songs about the the current uh, East German administration. And he was too famous. They could not put him into jail. He was too famous because his record company was located in West Germany. Big, big, big West German record company, international, actually, American record company. So uh, they, they didn't dare to, to do something. Otherwise, they feared that uh, East Germany would, you know, uh, stand up. And, and break the wall down, which happened much later. But first they kicked my stepfather out of the country because they, they played a trick on him. They said, hey, you can play in West Germany. Don't you want to have a concert in West Germany? <laughs> and well, Because he was invited. So he was actually asking if he could go. So he could go, but guess what? He did a very successful concert. It was on television, simultaneously on all the three West German channels. That was in 1976, and um, they broadcasted him simultaneously. Isn't that funny? Wow. Each TV station, the same program. <laughs> Anyways, um, next morning in the East German newspaper, it says uh, he is our biggest enemy. He put dirt on our soil, and because his songs are critical and funny sometimes, you know, and the regime just couldn't stand it. And they always said, who is not with us is against us. And we just couldn't hear it anymore. And we were uh, wiretapped uh, and spied on. Oh, this is all my childhood. I can remember that. And my mother lost her job at the, at the TV station. She was a very popular actress. We called her the Brigitte Bardot of East Germany. And actually, she uh, overdubbed, uh, synchronized uh, the, all the movie, all the Marilyn Monroe movies. So my mom's voice... <laughs> I grew up with, uh, seeing Marilyn Monroe's movies with my mom's voice. Oh, that is amazing, Nina. Hey, oh, I'm telling you people, we have to be courageous. Just look at that fantastic um, personality called Dennis Kucinich. He was uh, the number six in the baseball team, I heard. And he was so small, and he ate so much turf, and now he's running for president. I love it. I love America for this, and I think if we if we wake up from our slum beauty sleep, and if we switch off the television, which bombards us with gigantic propaganda, I have never seen such a thing. They even make 
they're even making fun of uh, the fantastic actor Sean Penn only be because he is an endorser of Dennis Kucinich. So they make fun of this. Um, on, I saw it on the on the channel who has this animal with the bushy tail, you know. Right. Name. <laughs> well. Uh, anyway, Fox. Yeah. They yeah say there the it bushy goes. Tail, <laughs> television station, and they're making fun of people who are supporting American citizens who are running for president. I mean, this is wicked propaganda. I have seen this come and go before. I hope it will go rather than come again. Well, let me ask you, Nina, and I let me remind our listeners, we're speaking with Nina Hagen, who is an incredible performer, colorful personality, born in East Germany, and uh, a long, beautiful career in music, uh, really avant-garde and uh, We'll get to the point when you connect it up with the punk movement in Britain and were big influences of Sex Pistols and others who, who found your work very admirable and followed you closely. I'm just curious about this, Nina. You're talking about the propaganda machine coming from the press here so strongly in, in the U.S. And, of course, in the run-up to the war in, in Iraq, so-called war, the invasion, so many of the stories repeated, repeated, yeah. I'm just wondering, you, you grew up in East Germany. Now, you left when you were relatively young. I'm, mm-hmm. just, I'm just wondering, what is your, I mean, is there, are there some similarities when you say there, you, it was either you were with us or against us, one party? Yeah. It sounds big, it sounds familiar almost now. Yeah, it's very scary. And you know, they label uh, Kucinic uh, a commie and a lefty, and I just do not think so. I think he is a very strong Democrat. I have seen the commies, I have seen the lefties. They act different than uh, Dennis Kucinich. She stands for uh, a true America. And that's the America I learned to love when I grew up, with learning to know Elvis Presley, with learning to know the music of uh, my superheroes, uh, Ella Fitzgerald and Marianne Williams, the gospel queens. And it's an endless, endless, endless number of fantastic American people who uh, made me become the, the artist that I am today. If it wasn't for the American culture, for American music and New Orleans-based uh, blues and, and jazz and swing and later uh, rock and punk, and I wouldn't be an artist if, if America wouldn't have, you know, created this music in the first place. And and so I'm a lover of America and and... Yeah, my daughter is an American woman. She was born here in 1981. Um, when, um, when we came to the USA in 1980, Bennett Glotzer, Frank Zappa's manager, took me under his professional wings. I started to record English language albums, where before I only sang in my, in my mother tongue. And so Cosma Shiva was born in Los Angeles, and she's 26 years old now, like Britney Spears. And... Um, She's a very popular actress in Germany. We have co-starred in a couple of movies together. I love to work with my daughter. We did the Snow White um, adaptation, and I'm the evil stepmother, and she's Snow White. So my son Otis goes to school here in the United States since many, many, many years. He went to preschool. And um, I just, yeah, through my upbringing as as a Berliner, in East Berlin, I mean, I only came out in 76. Wow. After they kicked out my stepfather, I said to my government, I'm going to sing his songs, I'm going to sing my stepfather's songs. Uh, if you don't let him back in, I'm out. Or uh, if you don't let me out, I continue his work. So they, they let me out. Huh. Then I came to America very in a very young age. I think I was 24. And when Bennett uh, came to Hamburg and saw me perform and said, hey, you have to come to the United States, and I said, hey, I'm ready, guess what, this is, it was always my dream. And so I came here and started um, b- building a band together and going on tour and start our first albums and so forth, and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 not blah, blah, blah. Let- but talking, I- and so we're still alive and kicking, <laughs> and I'm working with so many different big band orchestras all over the world. I want to do something wonderful in Las Vegas with Tom Jones and uh, or also by myself. If Tom doesn't want to duet with me, 
duet with me. And I'm doing a, a fantastic uh, col collaboration with the Elvis Presley gospel songs. We call it the Elvis Foundation. And we ask if, if it's allowed that I can duet with the king with, on certain gospel songs. So this is one of my projects that I'm always singing with Elvis together. I'm like his, his core. You know, I have a bass voice. I'm an alto. But I, call, I can also sing pretty high. So that's my passion these days, to make a new album and um, totally concentrate on our uh, support for Dennis Kucinich. I'm uh, organizing a big New Year's Eve party here in Los Angeles. We found a fantastic uh, film studio. We decorated it. Um, beautiful playground. There is even a rooftop. It's, it's uh, overlooking the beautiful skyline of downtown LA. And if you guys in Iowa have nothing better to do, you come on down, party hopping. But I guess um, it's too far away. Well, it's a pretty long drive, that's for sure. But I I'm sure some will be out there. I know... Uh... To Iowa soon. And I, I said, how many hours drive? And then he said, yeah, two days. <laughs> two days without stopping. But uh, it's, a, it's a big country, of course, the U.S. We're about... 36 hours away driving or so. Oh, when they said two days, I said, then I said, oh my God, that's like Germany, six times Germany. No, I'm not driving. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a long way. It's better to fly, Nina. But let's just, uh, let me ask a couple more questions of you. Your career, you have such a theatrical side to everything that you do, so colorful, so much a part of fashion. As of my father, because he was so funny. I, see, I, I think I saw Jim Carrey, the American actor Jim Carrey, once in an interview, and he explained that his very father was always reading the fairy tales or the good night stories in a very funny way and made faces and, and very, yeah, funny. So that's why he became so funny. And I have a very funny streak, too. And so, um, yeah, but music is my, is my kingdom. And, and the humor, uh, my humor is pretty funny. Well, also in a very, you have a very humorous but fashionable, uh, sexy and uh, marvelous combination of all the elements of rock and roll or punk or whatever. You know, there's something, well, diva is the word that comes to mind, but in a, in a super... Uh, supercharged way, I, I would say. And I, I'm just wondering, I guess all these elements combined in your career, that you, you've kind of gone where, where, where you ever go. You seem like a, an artist who's just always finding some new way to un, uh, start something. Yeah, that, that's what art is all about. You, I, I'm about joint venturing with other artists. Um, last Christmas, we uh, organized a big charity event for American war resistors in Germany. And you see, when the Afghanistan war started, I was once again proud of my American brothers and sisters because they helped to intervene in a non-humane situation for me I understood I didn't know that they are bombing with depleted uranium and destroying DNA this I found out much later and I was in shock and uh, I uh, met my friends in Germany from the uranium weapon conference um, there is a whole um, big uh, group of people on the University of Kassel who organized this big big conference with uh, scientists and experts, mostly Americans, and also from all over the world in, in 2002 already. And you see the information about the danger we're living in is out there. The, new, the information is out there. But the media is not telling it to us, or they're, they're hiding it from us, or it, it's, it's a hidden agenda. They, they do this behind closed doors, but if you look in the internet and thank God for this possibility that we still have this possibility, and if we don't watch out and if we don't wake up, they might take this away from us too, the freedom of the internet, because it's, um, it's, a, it's high crime against humanity. To bump uh, human beings with depleted uranium, you must understand that the DNA is getting destroyed, and it's not only getting destroyed in the territory of the bombings, but it, the, uh, through the dust and the winds, the, uh, this uh, uranium radiation is, is multiplying throughout the winds. And Bruce Springsteen made a very interesting song about this. It's 
called Devils and Dust. And, right. and um, I, I am mourning about this daily. I've seen the photographs of these uh, 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 deformed newborn babies. There is a couple of movies out there about this. People went there many times. Also, Sean Penn, he went to Iraq before the war started. I believe we people, we have to uh, protect Sean Penn from the ridicule of, of the television I saw. I saw the people on, uh, in, on American television making, you know, uh, nasty remarks about a, a, an American citizen who's just standing up for, um, supporting a presidential candidate. I mean, how low can you get? And there I see a combination of not telling us what kind of criminal uh, warfare they, they are uh, using, and on the other hand, making fun and, and propaganda against uh, people who support Kucinich, and on top of everything, uh, uh, treat Kucinich in a very unjust way and uh, uh, don't give him, because he, because he doesn't take money from big corporations, because he really wants to clean up America from uh, from uh, alien forces. Oh God, alien forces, when I say that. Another story pops to my mind. Since the 50s, there are those secret CIA mind control programs happening in the USA. This is also a secret societies uh, uh, conducting this type of uh, satanic, uh, anti-human, uh, torturous um, project that they, uh, you know, I mean, there's books about it. I start stuttering when I speak about those things because we really have to clean up our, our world, our America, before we leave this planet and, and leave it to our children and children's children. And who knows out there that I'm not going to be the baby of my daughter's grandma, grandchildren, for example. Right? I mean, Albert Einstein once said, the miracle of being born, uh, having a, a soul and uh, having a human body, if that miracle happens once, yeah, why can't it happen again? Right. Well, I might become a, a human being yet again. But if a group of perverted philosophers who are sitting behind closed doors and who are counting on Bible codes and, and speaking about prophecies on Armageddon and the, the, the coming of the Messiah and that certain dark and, and chaotic, uh, chaotic situation has to be established in order for the Messiah to come in, I must say to you people, please wake up. Those people are perverted. They are crazy. They are sick. They have sick minds. They close their doors when they do their, their meetings. And then they do this warfare with depleted uranium. It, it's, it's unfathomable. We have to wake up. We can actually, we should impeach those people and, um, and stand up and stand tall and, and, and start breathing again and get rid of gulag schools, of military boot camps, where the list of dead children who have no rights is so long that a mother like me is like tossing and turning in her sleep. Mm. And um, it's, it's unjust. It has nothing to do with justice and with, with, with human rights. And if a country uh, is already mm, disrespecting its own uh, human dignity and human rights, then something is wrong. We have to open the doors of those secret people here you know, in secrecy, uh, trying to stir our fate. No, what? I don't want a perverted group of philosophers to stir my and my, my fellow human beings' fate. We, want, we the people want to stir the fate. We don't need some perverted philosophers who have so much money that they can buy the media, and, and, and that's why they can blab us full with their, with their sort of propaganda that the war soon, then, oh God, and then I saw blooper troopers. This is such a mean thing. They, you know, they entertain people with blooper troopers, uh, trooper bloopers. I mean, it's a TV station who has nothing better to do than to have soldiers who are doing the hardest job 
endeavor to, to serve their country in a war, and it's it's even an unjust war, and it is an indignified war because it is a, a, a in German language we say Völkerrechtswidriger Krieg. That means it is against Geneva Conventions. It's against any kind of human laws. To, uh, to work with the Trojan horse of a nuclear war because that's what the depleted uranium is. And you know, I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, but I've seen the films and I've seen the pictures and I've heard the words of the people crying out for help. Our Muslim brothers and sisters, they are being genocided, they are being killed for generations to come and guess what? The crazy and the, uh, to top the horror story, it, we are affected too. The American uh, veterans who are coming home, they have the same problems with their newborn children. DNA is destroyed, people. You cannot allow, I'm not, call, I'm not calling out any names here. You know exactly who I'm talking about. You cannot allow these kind of human beings to, uh, to, to govern a country. Well, I, we're, we're certainly hoping... It's out there. I read it, you know, in the last elections. Uh, when was that? Four years ago. <clears throat> the, the media was writing about the Skulls and Bones Club. George Bush was as a, a young student and also his father. And this is a um, satanic organization, a secret organization, um, which also the information is available to the people you can read books about it very courageous uh, americans have written books about this horrible phenomenon of the um, of these people and where they come from and what kind of secret clubs they belong to and then it's my jewish brothers and sisters in new york going on the street to fight against the fascist perverted right wing Zionists, which are, which are destroying the beautiful and the true Jewish religion. It's, it's ridiculous. We cannot allow this. We have to, um, how I say, we have to be stronger than, than them. The same thing happened in Germany. That's what, how my father, edu my father educated me. And no wonder my father said there is no God and he was an atheist. They have tortured him as a 17-year-old in, um, in a Zuchthaus, in a, in a prison. He, he was not in jail because he came, he was captured uh, fighting in Spain against the Nazis. He joined the anti-fascist uh, troops. And um, when the Americans and the Russians uh, invaded and stopped World War II, he was saved just in time so I can, I can bubble you full with my story. And with my with my outrage, because I am outraged, I spend a lot of time in hospices in Germany and speak with sick and dying uh, people, and they are my friends. And I will die one day one day too. And I want I also want somebody to hold my hand when I feel sick and and when I'm old and when I'm uh, when I can't move or when I can't help myself. I also want another human being to have uh, compassion for me until I am allowed to go to the, to the kingdom of God. But um, it is a pervert, totally perverted philosophy to, to believe that one type of human being is, is uh, because that's what the Jewish, fun, uh, the, not the Jewish, the Zionists, uh, fundamentalists, extremists are saying, that they say that everything which is not pure and Jewish is golem and has to be eradicated. <laughs> it really, I, so, I might sound like crazy and aggravated, but it's, it's written in the book of Wolfgang Eggert, and he researched this phenomenon for many years. He wrote eight books about this, also about the secret Vatican and uh, those people who are in the Bush administration uh, holding up Bible meetings with the uh, right-wing Zionists and the uh, extreme so-called Christians. And I wonder what that has to do with the teachings of Christ who said, um, love, 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 and the rest you can read in your book. But, but Nina, you said, who wrote the eight books? What? Who, who wrote the eight books? You just said they wrote eight books. Okay, it's a 
German author. His name is Wolfgang, W-O-L-F-G-A-N-G, -G, Wolfgang, and uh, his last name is Eggert, E-G-G-E-R-T. Okay, well, thank you for that. I, I also want to mention that according to your biography that I read that you lost uh, uh, both paternal Jewish grandparents, uh, they lost their lives. Well, it was one, because the other one was not Jewish. My grandmother was a Shitze. She gave birth to three children with my uh, grandfather, okay. and then they were allowed to marry. I see. Because love is sacred. and. Uh, who are you to tell me that I am not worthy as a human being? This is perverse, because only because I'm not Jewish, I'm not like full, <laughs> full proven Jewish and I have a Jewish mother, I only have a half Jewish father. I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But they are trying to, to, to say otherwise. They're, they're crazy. This, this is something which we have to clean up. It's a mess. Well, let me just, let me fast forward then. When did you... They're here in a big mess. These Bush and Cheney people are, are perverted philosophers. And they say who's not with us is against us. I have heard this before. I'm not buying this at all. Well, I... I appreciate that and I want to ask you when we are speaking with Nina Hagen right now and she is speaking with us from Los Angeles where she is residing and uh, will be holding a, a very special New Year's Eve party you can go to her website we'll have a link to that on our website and, you, and you can see that that uh, she has Dennis Kucinich right up on her home page when did you meet Dennis Kucinich the first time Nina um sitting at a German talk show because I was doing a documentary about UFOs and apparently because I have my own TV show and, and on German television and uh, we did uh, we wanted to do a documentary about this UFO phenomenon because there is so much secrecy going on and my friend David Sirida is a, a filmmaker who made a very good movie about this phenomenon and it's called Dan Aykroyd Unplugged on UFOs. So I told the talk master in Germany to look at this film, this was my condition, to, to accept the invitation to, to go to this talk show. So she promised it to me, and then I'm sitting in the talk show, and she does as if she doesn't know anything, and she didn't know, and what are you talking about? So they, they made fun of me. And, and, and everybody was laughing, and yeah, Nina Hagen believes in UFOs, ha, ha, ha. Hey, people, I have seen one, 1981. We, uh, we were, I was pregnant with Cosma. It was on Malibu Beach. I, we, had, we rented a house there at this time. And uh, the story is written down. I wrote it in my autobiographies everywhere. So it's not my fault that a stupid UFO came to visit me and, 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 and I stood paralyzed on my window and can't remember how I went back to the bed. It's not my fault. Excuse me, people. Don't ridicule me because I saw a freaking UFO. And you know what? Since the CIA secret mind control victims came out with books like from Cassie O'Brien, uh, Transformation of America, you know, it's another woman in Canada I came across t during my research, and, and, and she was abducted by like evil, evil things, satanic things, and, and later on we find out it's staged attacks. They do this since her childhood. They brainwashed her. They tortured her. It's crazy shit. So we need to talk about this and not ridicule people who have seen something. Because who knows if not another secret American uh, institution or organization um, is doing those, those things, those UFO things. Maybe they are not extraterrestrial at all. <laughs> and, and I want Dennis Kucinich to clean up this mess because... Uh, let me tell you, we need a new leader to speak upon the issues. Those who take offense, uh, oh God, yes. Those who take offense, sorry if we diss you. It's critical in the political arena. The rhymes are wrote. You have to listen to Nina. 
<laughs> well, thank you, Nina Hagen. We, we are having so much fun getting a chance to meet you. Well, and yeah, and I didn't finish my thing. After, the, after this talk show, everybody was laughing at me that I'm telling such crazy stories. And the next day, they stopped laughing at me because Dennis Kucinich was asked at a press conference, well, people, Shirley MacLaine says in her book, you have seen a UFO. And uh, is that true? And Dennis Kucinich says, yes. I have seen uh, something there which I couldn't identify as an airplane or a helicopter or whatnot. And people were laughing. <laughs> that is so mean, people. Wake up, people. There is people behind our backs, behind closed doors, and they're playing some really perverted games with us. And, and, and stop laughing at us when we're trying to, to find a lawyer for us people, a good lawyer like Dennis Kucinich. Let him clean up. Uh, this this secrecy and behind closed doors, uh, closed doors, secret organization people. I cannot stand it em anymore. I have my German Chancellor Angela Merkel. When I'm getting upset about the German politics, I take her. It is a lemon squeezer in the form of <laughs> Angie Merkel, and I put a lemon on top of her head and I squeeze and squeeze, <laughs> and then I drink. And then I feel better. <laughs> so whenever you get upset about the current political situation, I would su suggest uh, get yourself a lemon squeezer of the faces of the politicians you don't like to be your leaders anymore and squeeze them with the lemons. They will feel that and maybe they will resign <laughs> because they will feel that the people don't want to be misled and misruled by them anymore. And I hope... People will wake up and not do the same thing like the German people did uh, at the outbreak of the Second World War. But nobody wanted to hear that the Jews were ridiculed. My family was called Levy in, uh, before they had to change their name into Hagen because anti-Semitism became so strong. And now uh, other things are becoming strong because those old gentlemen and their perverted gentlemen clubs discussing the politics of the world are thinking out, you know, ways how to uh, fulfill the prophecy. That's their game. It's so sick, and we need to know this so we can stop them, we can impeach them, and we can um, vote real, non-criminal leaders as uh, the American government. And this is my biggest prayer for America, that this might happen again, that this country will, will be able to breathe free again and to, to clean up the mess and come out you know, new and golden, prosperous America. Oh, I wish for it so much. I'm not a good speaker, but I'm a good singer, I guess. <laughs> oh, Nina, I, I so appreciate you sharing your feelings with us. One thing I have always admired about Dennis Kucinich is his desire to set up a, a peace department. Uh, even, even the call for a peace department is giving credit to the idea that there's something more or equally as important as a war department for defense, that there should be something to promote peace. And I had earlier today on the air uh, a Lakota Sioux chief, uh, Chief uh, Arvel Law, a Looking Horse, and he is a, is a Lakota Sioux Indian, uh, Native American, I should say, who goes around to, he's been to Baghdad, he's been to the rainforest, he's been all over talking about peace and prayer and promoting that. And to me, I think one of the things missing is the emphasis on the peacemakers. Blessed are the peacemakers. Certainly, uh, uh, De Dennis Kucinich has been uh, uh, a, a man who has stood up for peace uh, before uh, the invasion of Iraq when it was very unpopular to do so and uh, I know that it meant a lot to me at the time when most people wouldn't uh, look at the question what does 9-11 have to do with Iraq yeah weird huh I didn't get it either as I said I I supported American troops, and when they marched into Afghanistan, I was so happy for the women. Finally, they could go out again and, and um, go to the doctor again and, and go to school again and have human rights. 
It was a very, very, very nasty situation when the Taliban were in the regime. And so therefore I restarted to make right away a charity towards uh, helping Afghanistan and, and um, the women of Afghanistan, a huge charity party in Germany, all the big stars were there, and, and the Sabri brothers from Pakistan, they're like the Jackson 5, they're like Cool and the Gang of, of Pakistan, they're called the Sabri brothers, they're wonderful. And, and you know, there's so many beautiful religions, so many beautiful cultures, why, why can't we share our spiritual knowledge? You, you don't have to guru hop, you don't have to religion hop, follow the religion of your heart, but let the others follow their religion of their heart, and we can do this. We, can, I, we must do this, because the perverted group who has the dangerous weapons, I call them like spiritual kindergarten, hmm. because they are misled. Yes, and, uh, and I, yeah. I'm with you as well on the depleted uranium issue that you brought up before. Uh, I think a lot of Americans don't even understand the extent to which that was done in the first Gulf War uh, and now in the second one as well. But uh, we just hope that, uh, I, I certainly hope that, as you say, your call to wake people up. I know you've had a long career uh, in, the, in the music business where you've combined a lot of different elements. And, and I see when you look across your, the albums that you've made, um, starting with the Nina Hagen Band, and also solo effects, a punk. Uh, you've done an album, Om Namah Shivai. And yeah, I learned that music in India, in the Himalayas. What? I play the harmonium, and then I sing in Sanskrit. Oh, that's wonderful. So, that's and the music. As I said, uh, right now I'm working on the project with Elvis Presley. Yep. Well, that's great. When do you expect that out? That, that'll be your next project then? Yeah, for sure. Elvis came into my dream, this was so funny, Elvis came into my dream like a year ago and he came from a sound check and he was apparently sick, he had like a cough, a hoarse voice, he couldn't perform that evening and all the people were, oh my god, they were, oh, what am I going to do? And he shushed everybody up and he pointed his index finger at me and he said, she's going to take over. And I was like, oh. And, and like, quick, 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 sound check, people are coming in, and you work it. And that was so meaningful to me, because, you know, in the dream, things have a very personal, make sense, kind of, it's like a movie, the soul is like a di movie director, it's funny. And anyways, and then a couple of days later, my manager comes in and, and, and says to me, do you know that Elvis Presley did like a million of gospel song recordings? I said, you must be kidding. <laughs> little ignorant Nina Hagen from East Berlin, but I was, I'm the biggest Elvis Presley fan, why, why didn't, didn't I know? Yeah, oh, yeah, lots and lots of gospel. Playing hide and seek with me as much as he's doing with, with everybody. We have to be, we have to be respectful for, for creation. We have to be respectful for God. If we go, listen, if we go too close under the nose, nose of a human being, that's disrespectful. I mean, you know, that's why people say, don't touch me. Don't come so close to me, you know. Dolphins, the same. So, but I don't understand the whole, the whole thing. They're, they're stepping too close to God. They're playing around. They're playing um, God's uh, will makers. They're, they're, those people who advise Bush and who, who do the uh, uh, depleted uranium warfare. They do this because they believe that they're doing the will of God. They, they do this because of their perverted philosophy or belief system that they, they believe they need to destroy this everything which is non-Jewish over there. And can't you see? Please watch the movies, people. Um, Poison Dust, one is called. And here this one is called Deadly Dust. From uh, Todes, original title is Todesstaub, that's the German title, and um, it ex exists in English too, and the filmmaker is called Frieda Wagner, and he played this film at the last Berlin Film Festival last February, and, and look, nobody knows this film, and I mean, you know, when this would have happened, then, like, oh God, 
gets weird, worse and worse. Back in the days when my parents were young, and I was not born yet, you know, they told me that they had the same situation. People didn't want to believe that anybody wanted to do some, something so evil to destroy a whole race of people. But this is happening now again. Mm. Now is another race has to go. But it's not only, listen people, when the scientists are warning us, they say, this depleted uranium is going around through the wind and the dust. Soon, every, soon everybody's DNA will be destroyed. And, and, and the people, we could all stand together and not be afraid to lose our jobs. Listen, if we all wake up and if everybody gets this information of this kindergarten club who's playing Armageddon with us, then if everybody stands up, then nobody has to be afraid to lose their jobs and not be able to pay their rents anymore. But everybody stands up in America and says, stop. This is genocide. This is a high crime against humanity. Impeach those people. Get them off their, their, their positions and, and, and elect you know, good leaders. Well, let me just say, that's one thing. Dennis Kucinich has called for impeachment, hasn't he? I, I know that Dennis Kucinich um, called for impeachment of Vice President Cheney, and uh, this was swished off the table, and the Congress landed somewhere on the floor, or the other way around, and, and now it's hanging there somewhere. Well, you know, I've been disappointed. To, yes, I've been disappointed too, Nina, as well. With the uh, reasons you people have to impeach uh, those philosophers. I've been disappointed as well since the Democrats took control again at the midterm elections. I thought we'd see a little bit more movement in that direction. I spoke with Russ Feingold. Oh, me too. Oh, God, why well, are we happy when we heard that a woman got Picozzi, right? Nancy Picozzi, uh, Democrat, is the Speaker of House now, and woo, woo, woo. Oh, nothing's happening. They, 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 maybe they all don't know about, what's, about this, this crime against humanity, which is being acted out on, uh, in, in Iraq and elsewhere, that destroying people. DNA, and we're watching as we speak. I mean, hello, can somebody please wake up and wake the others up? Because back in the days, my, my parents had, you know, their uh, horrible World War II to suffer. You know, my mom grew up, uh, no food, nettle, nettle soup again. Oh, nettle soup. She told me about nettle soup. Oh God, and my father, he showed me this swastika that burned inside his, his flesh. I'm a witness, people. I'm 52 years old. I'm not a punk rocker. I'm, that's what the media tried to, you know, to tell people, yeah, she's punk rock. Ha. I'm a musician. <laughs> I'm a singer. I work with many different big bands and little bands, and I do lots of... Um, Animation, voiceover. We did Nina Hyena. And well, also, didn't weren't you? Uh, didn't you start uh, studying ballet little? And and uh, were you considered an opera prodigy by the time you were nine? Is that true? Yeah, I, I um, found my opera voice at the theater where my mom was playing My Fair Lady, the musical, and all the opera singers. They were always doing their exercises, and that's how I found my voice because. As a little girl, many girls do that, boys do. They imitate the voices of other people. My, my little daughter, the first five years, we lived in L.A. Then we went to live one year in London, and her accent switched. Like, as soon as she has, like, a, a, a London nanny, her American accent went away, people. <laughs> <laughs> when you're young... Um, you can imitate and you can autodidactically auto teach yourself. And when you're passionate about um, something, then you, you can accomplish anything, even um, using your voice as an instrument, yeah. Must believe in it. 
because my mom said in the beginning when I started singing, she said, oh my God, that sounds horrible. Please, Nina, don't sing. My mom is a singer too, actress and singer. <laughs> oh, that is harsh. <laughs> and I said, Mom, I was just imitating Joan Baez. That's just one of my voices. I have many aspects. Just you wait and see. <laughs> And then she was so proud when later on she realized, oops, I have more voices in my little keyboard than she does. That is great. Let me ask you this, Nina. We are speaking with Nina Hagen, a legendary East German-born singer who's had a, a wonderful career in music in many different directions, is an avid supporter of Dennis Kucinich's bid for the Democratic presidential uh, nomination. I'm just wondering, what are your, you've probably played most places, many places around the world. Where do you find that you enjoy the audiences the most, or, or does that just vary? Oh, that would be a mean thing to say, you know. I like the Dutch audience better than the German audience. Such a thing doesn't even exist, because people are people. But of course, when I, when I perform in the United States of America, my heart is melting. I, I just... I've, I always felt so welcome here when I came here in, um, in 1980. I was so warmly received. American people are so so friendly. And here in California, when some German people come here for the first time, they say, oh my God, everybody's so friendly. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. And, and you should claim your power back. Claim your power back, America. Uh, there's some sick philosophers and they must not be allowed to do their hidden agendas any longer. This is really high time for us because you see the, the dust is, is uh, blowing that, that nuclear warfare through the winds and, and, and it will reach all sorts of nations, that's, that's their plan. They want to create as much uh, darkness and chaos and despair so the messiahs can come. You must understand that they have gone berserk. When, when somebody is, um, becomes perverted, and, like there is uh, certain people who have become sexually perverted and who hurt other human beings for this reason, in the same way some people have become philosophically perverted and religiously perverted and, and perverted through their, through their riches, their material riches. It's just a group of people who own the, um, the how you say in English, who, who, who di direct the affairs of the financial world. Like the, it, it is, um, it, it's a, it's in, in, injustice which screams to the sky for me that people have to pay so much money just to have a house, a roof over their heads mm. because of, because of this uh, one central group of bankers, um, everybody has to suffer. I mean. It, it's not just who are those people just because they hoarded money and then they now they have the power to let the others pay and pay and pay a lifelong sentence mortgage 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 oh it's killing me oh i have to have two, three jobs oh my poor children have no time and the school classes are so big oh they're testing them no child left behind this is horrible my son is suffering you know he's 17 you know he's not suffering but in a way yes because they're having tests all the time. A test, a test, a test, a test, a test. Mm. Um, and the Gulag schools, you have, to, America needs to close these kind of undignified. You mean in Guantanamo and elsewhere? You know, satanic institutions for human sake, yeah? Yes. You, you mean Guantanamo and other places in... in uh, yeah, the, uh, School of the Americas. Okay. The military boot camps. The world calls those American schools gulag schools. Hmm. You must not allow this. 
This is not America. It's a propaganda machine who is playing Armageddon. It's a group of old men stuck in a perverted spiritual kindergarten. Hmm. They're destroying the Jewish religion, the true Jewish religion. They have gone berserk. It's a sickness. Well, I think that is, is a beautiful sum up. And I cannot tell you how much I appreciate you spending this much time with us here at Crew FM. I'm delighted to have had a chance to talk with you about your life experience, your musical career, your, your passionate connection with uh, Dennis Kucinich's campaign, and your, and your really uh, fervent belief in the possibility of a better America that uh, even though... Survival of humankind, because the depleted uranium is destroying it, and I'm begging you to, to research this. Um, I'm trying to find out if this book exists in English, but there's more books about it. A friend of mine told, told me there's a book, Third Temple, Jerusalem, something. It's a very, very uh, serious matter. That's why they're doing this warfare. That's why they're, we're having these troubles. We have to get rid of these governing elements, these people. Bye-bye. I say bye bye. I wave my white flag. Bye bye bye. You must know that I'm broadcasting live on my little TV station on uh, videofreeearth.com channel seven. That's me. Wonderful. Oh, Nina, thank you so much. Uh, I, I'm just going to say you've been listening to KRUULP 100.1 FM, the voice of Fairfield, Iowa. We've been speaking with Nina Hagen. Delighted to to do so. I hope you will make it out sometime, Nina. We have a beautiful new civic center here now that just went up and in a number of possible venues. So perhaps we can talk about that down the line. I'm going to sign off for now.